From the hills of Connolly Ranch, it's easy to imagine that the Diablo Range hasn't changed much since the ranch was established around 1870. If you squint to the north, you can see the head of the range, Mount Diablo. To the south, more remote mountains stretch all the way to Kern County. Grizzly Adams captured bears here in the late 1800s. Mountain lions are still present. Ranch owner Mark Connolly sees them every year. Once when he was looking around with his daughter. There was a mountain lion sitting on top of the rock there and we pointed out the mountain lion on top of the rock and then she said, well, what about the other one over there? <laughs> Photographer Scott Hine and I came here in October of 2020 to report on the effects of the 400,000 acre SCU Lightning Complex fire. But an even more dramatic story emerged about the remarkable family that's been tending and defending this land for five generations. Mark Connolly and his wife, Celeste Garamendi, raised beef here on 9,000 acres of rolling grassland, woodland, and chaparral. Part of the job, as they see it, is protecting the life and land around them, so they fence off ponds and move their 300 cow and calf pairs from pasture to pasture to avoid overgrazing. They protect habitat for kit foxes, red-legged frogs, and tiger salamanders through conservation easements. They partner with the state to accommodate a herd of tule elk that roams the property. They've opened their gates to a scientist studying golden eagles. To minimize the ranch's carbon footprint, they're experimenting with selling grass-fed beef with no antibiotics or growth hormones directly to consumers. Taking the lead on that project is a fifth generation of Connollys, their daughters, Catherine and Bridget. The ranch lies in the hills above Corral Hollow, probably named for a place where wild horses were confined in the late 1800s. For the Spanish, the hollow was part of an inland route to Los Angeles, El Camino Viejo. Later, 49ers passed through on their way to the gold fields. Corral Hollow was never an easy place to raise livestock. The Irish immigrants who congregated here had to endure cold, windy winters, hot, dry summers, less than a dozen inches of rain per year, and of course, the occasional fire. The latest fire came on August 16th, 2020. That morning, Mark and Celeste got up early to watch the arrival of a noisy, unseasonable storm. And we got up to watch it and it was unlike any other thunder and lightning storm we'd seen. It was so dramatic and so loud. About an hour after the fireworks subsided, Mark went to check his property. He was surprised to find a helicopter and a crew of state firefighters cutting down a smoking tree. They were taking it down with a chainsaw and said that they were flying to one of the other fires and that they were going to leave and that it was on us. Point. They made a point of saying, you're on your own. You're on your Do own. Do not expect anybody else to come back for and days. That was on a Sunday. They waited and watched as lightning struck to the south and east. On Tuesday afternoon, Mark sent an SOS to his daughters. No question about it, the fires were coming. So they gathered together to move horses, cattle, pets, and possessions out of harm's way. By nightfall, they stood together on a high ridge, ready to fight. We got all of the fire cans that we could, the rakes, the shovels, and we had our two vehicles that we thought were well out of the distance, and that fire came up the last 50 yards just super fast. We literally are running to get in the vehicles and drive them out of the way. By this time, the fire was approaching their house. Not a moment too soon, state firefighters arrived, quickly lit a backfire and created a safe space around the house. But that wasn't the end of the battle. Two more hard days and sleepless nights ensued as multiple fires coming from different directions merged and moved back and forth across Connolly Ranch and nearby lands. By the time we arrived, the fire had been out for more than a month. 
but life on the ranch was far from normal. Fences had burned down. Grass was gone in many fields, so they needed to buy hay. Devices to tap water from springs had been destroyed and needed to be repaired. Many springs weren't running, so they brought in water in trucks. Mark and Celeste were exhausted. They still had enough energy to hope, though, that spring would make things easier. The ranch has a long history of overcoming obstacles. The ranch was homesteaded by my great-grandfather, Patrick Conley, and then Patrick Joseph Conley, his son, and then my father, Robert Conley. And you could not survive on 160 acres up here, but if you homesteaded it, then you could sell it to somebody who was going to stay, so it was expanded that way. And then in 1918, railroad heirs started selling off their holdings. And so the people who were around here then were able to purchase those holdings. In the 1930s, there was a statewide shift from sheep to cattle. And that happened here like everywhere else. In the 1920s and 30s, the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission tunneled under the coast range and the ranch to carry water from Hetch Hetchy Reservoir in Yosemite to San Francisco. In the process, they dried up the Connollys' main well. The commission built the Connollys a new well a mile away, but later a weapons testing site in Corral Hollow polluted the water table with industrial solvents and other chemicals. A cleanup followed, and the Connollys got a compensatory pond. And then we had various new town projects. We had Carnegie Newtown, which we had to oppose because that was going to be in our border, and that's now in the Contra Costa Water District Preserve. Blocked that development. We had the Star Wars system, which the Corps of Engineers was going to condemn 5,000 to 6,000 acres for that Star Wars program, which went nowhere. It's a constant battle, constant battle. You spend your life trying to keep it together operating as a unit. The latest threat is an expansion of Carnegie State Vehicular Recreation Area into Tesla Park, five square miles of state land on Connolly's northern border. For the ranch, the expansion would mean more noise, more silted waterways and ponds, and more human-caused fires. For the region, it would mean the loss of an area so ecologically and culturally rich that it's included on a UC Berkeley list of top conservation priorities for the entire state. If you look down the ravine right in front of us, this is called the Mitchell Ravine. And it's a major watershed that feeds into the Corral Hollow Creek, but also the northern part of it is within what we identify and refer to as Tesla Park, which is planned for OHV recreation. If Tesla is opened up to OHV use, then that entire corridor is cut off by OHV recreation. It is directly in the path of the critical linkage habitat corridor, which is the lifeline of the Diablo Range. No one entity is really big enough to take care of such a massive mountain range. So the Connollys are incredibly important partners in the protection of that area. They are conservation heroes because they have taken such good care of that important section of the Diablo range. They're critical partners 